Welcome back everybody, welcome back to the Doc Squiffy channel, hope you're all doing well. Today we're going to cover how to try and eradicate, figure out why you may be getting buffering on your Amazon Fire Sticks, Fire TVs, Cubes, but you could use these sort of tips on any device really. These are some like basic guides like we are covering on this channel, but we want to try and figure out, because we get asked a lot, how do I stop everything buffering? Buffering is probably one of the most biggest pains in the ass if you're trying to stream, watch TV, do anything online, obviously movies, TV shows, live stuff. Or can be an absolute pain. So we're going to run through a few different things, how we can look at this, how we might be able to help you, and also give you some reasons why you were getting it. Brilliant. Before we get started, if you can, do remember, the Dog Squiffy channel is back, guys. We're covering streaming content, Fire Stick, Android TV, giveaways, everything. And we're going through a big range of basic guides for the Fire Stick currently on this season. So do remember, if you can, hit subscribe, ring that notification bell. You will not regret it. You will not regret it, guys, and we will bring you some great videos. We've already have tons underneath here. You may really want to go back and check out. So, buffering, buffering, buffering. What is the main cause for buffering? The main cause for buffering is your internet, guys. Your internet. Yes, we talk about overloaded streams at host and things like that, but your internet. People picking files which are too big for their internet. Okay, so especially if you're using certain streaming apps and it will tell you the file size, it may say something like a one gigabyte, two gigabyte, even all the way up to 20 gigabyte content, depending on what sort of movie file it is or what sort of sound file it has built into it. These files are huge, guys. And some people are trying to use a 20 gigabyte file with only about a 20 megabyte speed. And that just does not add up, guys. So you have to be really careful what you're looking at and which sort of files you are trying to stream. I always look at on my heat speed, and I have high internet speed, and I still do not look at sp files over maybe one to two gigabyte. If you don't know what I mean, don't worry too much about that, guys. What we need is some good internet speed. So let's get some speed tests, okay? So Analytics Speed Test is a good speed tester for your device. Um, you can get this directly from the Amazon store. I will show you in a second. What this also shows you within it is what you can do, guys, okay? For video stream type, it will tell you what you can do. 720p, 1080, 1080p gaming, 4K, everything. You will get a kit, a tick right behind my head, all the way down to 8K, guys. The internet speed, Wi-Fi quality, Wi-Fi strength, it will actually tell you if it is strong enough to do what you're wanting it to do, guys, okay? That's cool, yeah? We'd recommend you should do it more than one test just to get an average speed, but you can clearly see there that I have plenty of speed to do everything I want. My opinions, for any real decent speeding, you want around 20 to 30, guys. If you want to be streaming anything, 1080p, you want, some people say you can have it as low as 10, I think that's too low. Have around, technically 1080p should be 10 megabytes, 4K, 40 megabytes, that sort of thing. But I'd say get around 20 megabytes minimum on your download speed, and you should be able to watch like a 1080p fine. 30 to 40 megabytes, you should be able to get a low, lower quality, one of the lower qualities 4K, and then if it's up to 50 to 60 megabytes, you should be able to get solid 4K ultra high definition streaming but you have to be very careful on the file size like I said before so this speed tester is actually available directly in the magnifying glass guys so just type in analyty and you'll see speed tester available there and Wi-Fi analyzer that will also tell you if your signal is strong whether it's weak whether you should consider maybe wiring your fire stick in with some adapters things like that that is the main problem you guys will have it's 100% is your speed. It's the links you pick. This is also, you could look at things like real dev grids and things like that, which people use, depending on what streaming apps you use. I mainly use official apps here. So one great bit of advice for you guys, if you're struggling with buffering, use official apps. Don't use third party apps, use official apps. I'm not saying you shouldn't use them. That's up to you guys. What you do is your thing. But something like Netflix, um, Netflix, you know, and YouTube, things like that, the way they work is they alterate the frame rates, the resolutions to make it work for you. So if your speed's running low, you will get shown the quality of the stream for your speed quality, okay? So if your speed's only quick enough for a 480p, Netflix will give you a 480p show. If your speed's good enough for the 4K show, it will give you the 4K show. So your buffering is practically eradicated because it does the work for you. Okay, YouTube do the same. You will find the same things with some like iPlayers. All your official apps will do that sort of stuff. Third party apps, you pick the stream yourself. You pick the quality, you pick the stream. So that's your responsibility. And then some people with a low speed say, oh, I'm connected to the internet, will pick a movie file, which is five to 10 gigabytes, which their internet cannot handle. If your internet is struggling, 
before you start trying to stream something, turn everything off in your house, guys. Turn all your other devices off, tablets, phones, everything. Disconnect them from that bandwidth. You have 20 devices on your lower speed internet. The bandwidth will be split between them, so your Fire Stick will not be getting the full speed and the full connection and the full bandwidth, which will also then relate to buffering. Understand? That is your big one to watch out for, guys. Speed test. Other things you can look at is obviously processes running on your Fire Stick. Your Fire Stick itself can be overloaded, can have too much going on, so there's not enough free memory to actually build up your buffer. So you need a bit, two different things. You need a little bit of storage. So first go to your settings. Go to the uh, My Fire TV, sorry. About, and in here, just check your storage. See, I've got 681 megabytes free there. That is enough. But I always say you should keep a gigabyte free if you can. What you need spare storage for is when you are streaming something, no matter what you are streaming off, whether official or third party, you download some form of buffer, guys, okay? So that is a temporary file downloaded onto your device, which is a bit which you buffer up, ready to watch in advance. So you watch that bit. You watch that bit, and then it deletes itself. So that's why it's a temporary file. So you watch a little bit, then it deletes, downloads another bit, deletes. So technically, we've brought this up before that streaming is some form of downloading, but we're going to get onto that in another day. So you need to have some space there. What you also need is no background processes running. There's a couple of different apps you can get on this. There's Fast Task Killer. Um, you can check my channel out. We've done an install guide on this before. This just kills apps in the background and everything running, guys, okay? So that will kill any processes running in the background and speed up your device. The link for that video is above now if you wanted to install Fast Task Killer. Okay, it is also on the channel. Another one you could also get is Developer Tools Menu from your Amazon store. Developer Tools menu. Here, you can open this one up or install it. And in here, what you can actually do is list background apps and processes. It will ask you to download another app if this is the first time you're using it. And you can close these apps running in the background if you want to. So we've got a couple there we hadn't opened today. So you click it, you force stop, you go back. Um, I leave my VPNs on. It's personal opinion, I have mine running. You force stop it. And obviously you can force stop this one as well. Perfect. Again, coming off of that, that's your Fire Stick now running at the best spec. You know your internet speed and what you're able to do. Be careful, obviously, with VPNs. You can end up lowering your speed with certain VPNs. I'd still recommend using a VPN, but it can cut your speed. So what you can do is make sure you get some of the better VPNs, guys, okay? On our channel, we have obviously links to IPVanish, which have just boosted all their speed servers. So they're a lot faster than they used to be, $3.33 a month. And Iversy. Iversy runs a great speed. I can still pull 80 to 90 megabyte download speed with Iversy, which is huge, really, considering over a Wi-Fi through a VPN. So that's $1 a month. That is linked directly underneath as well, guys. Check those two out if you want a VPN. Something like IPVanish actually has split tunneling. So... If you didn't want to use it on certain official apps, you can split tunnel a signal, um, which we will cover in a later video. So do subscribe if you want a video like that. So that means the VPN is only on for maybe your unofficial apps, but on your official apps, you don't have your VPN on for. It's your choice which one you have it on for. You can pick the apps, so you don't have to just turn it on, off, on, off. You can pick the apps it specifically works for, which is a great little tip. Hope those little tips helped you. Comment underneath what you thought of it. I've been Doc Squiffy. We are back. Do subscribe, and I'll see you all soon.